I'm going to take just a few minutes to share with you all a little bit of information about Horace Mann. Horace Mann um, was a reformist, a educator, a politician, and ultimately a um, civil servant during the 19th century. Horace Mann um, came on the scene when the United States was still a very young and fledgling country, a country trying to establish itself and its citizens and a national identity. Horace Mann saw that society and man itself could be better, that man could be strengthened through, of course, a national identity, but also, importantly, a shared common goal, a goal that saw the good of one another as um, a priority over even the good of oneself, a shared common um, altruistic goal. His goal in life was that he would be able to bring about this sort of change through his reform. Now, part of his reform was also his personal stance of where he stood spiritually or where he stood also um, as far as what he saw to be the higher good of life and man. Um, Horace Mann aligned himself with the transcendentalism and the utilitarian movements. He viewed human progress as being tied to an individual's behavioral display of the universe's higher moral and spiritual power. It was a personal intrinsic improvement um, that was merged with that utilitarianism, which was counterculture to what he had grown up in, the Calvinist um, doctrine of human depravity, of man's fallenness and sinfulness. Instead, through this view, man saw that people, that the country, that individuals were able to better themselves, that they could more or less pick themselves up by the bootstraps and become better individuals, which would ultimately lead to a better society. He saw that the path to enlighten man and to rectify the injustices, which were numerous, but the injustices of the day, was going to be through the platform of educational reform. That is why Horace Mann is credited as being the father of one of the biggest um, methods of reform I think that many would agree upon would be the common school movement and he is credited as being the founder and father of that movement. It was a movement that that created an inclusive publicly funded education. Um, this education was unique from what had come before in that it was religiously neutral and neutral of political affiliation. He created a common Christianity ingrained into that public education of morality and values and ethics. The heart of his mission was to establish value formation in the young lives of those United States citizens. He wanted to instill morality and values and ethics which were indispensable to the character and formation of the child. He did this through a couple different methods. We're just going to pinpoint a few of those. One of the first methods that was actually foundational was through the professionalization and training of teachers. Prior to that time, teachers were not um, very well trained. There wasn't a um, solid standard of preparation for instructors, for teachers, and even their pay was incredibly measly, and there was gender gaps in the pay. Um, quite significant. And so he wanted to be able to prepare these teachers both academically and morally to guide and instruct these students. And he did so by actually creating a teacher, a school for teachers called the normal school where they could be prepared to instruct, to instruct in a superior manner. And um, he also included in that a broadening of the curriculum. Rather than just a basic rote memorization, he wanted to um, he wanted to further develop the child, further develop the skills needed to become those civil servants, those workers, those businessmen. And so he included subjects such as um, geography, history, and music. But most importantly, he really emphasized literacy, which we see um, even during John Calvin's time, Martin Luther's time. Those were very important academic subjects. And he himself, Horace Mann, also saw the immense value in literacy. He also wanted to make sure that the education provided was superior to anything that was available prior to that time or in opposition to his common school. He wanted to make sure that these students were well equipped and that they were receiving a education that was going to transcend racial and gender segregation that was occurring and injustices and make sure that they were 
um, definitely provided with that superior education. And in so doing, they needed to have a better environment for learning. So he also saw the importance of taking those school systems that were dilapidated, that were so far than ideal, that were just meager and in terrible shape, and providing a, um, a rectified and a nice environment for those students to be able to learn and for those teachers to be able to instruct. Um, all of this eventually led to his final role at Antioch College, where he served as president and continued to strive for the value formation and continues to strive for reform um, socially among those students there and to aid them in becoming those reformers in the future. Um, ultimately, value formation was at the heart of all that Horace Mann did, and that led, hopefully, to the reform that we see in the years to come. Um, of equality and morals and values. Um, that was all the heart of Horace Mann.